Okay guys, welcome back to part two of this speaker build. Uh, here I'm just going to quickly show you how I dealt with my chamfer issues, I guess, on the baffle and get into the finishing and then assembly and then my final thoughts. Okay, in part one of this video, I kind of left with a bit of a predicament. You can see the chamfer was an issue and I left with these thoughts. Not sure what to do. This is, I'm in a bit of trouble here. So, what I figured I'd do is I'd shape the baffle. In part one, I mentioned how it's solid wood and I can kind of cut into the wood a little bit. Because there's no veneer I gotta worry about getting through or anything, I can go a little bit nuts and um, sand away, carve away, cut away, do whatever I want, provided I don't actually go through the joint and into the speaker box. So I happily went to town with my belt sander, started giving this thing some shape, and trying to take out that little problem that um, where the baffle was short. This process didn't take as long as you would think. Belt sanders are pretty efficient at removing material. Okay, this is that side <clears throat> where I had the little issue. And I spent some time with the, um, the belt sander and I've taken it away and increased the size of that chamfer and given that chamfer a bit of sculpting. And I've kind of, it's hard to, I don't know if the, like, the depth is really there in the video, but I've given this some uh, curvature as well. And I'm going to do more. And, uh, and I might do some along the bottom as well. And then the hard part is going to be getting symmetry. So now i got to try to match this side with this side. Okay, before going much further, I figured I should route out the drivers. I made a template on my CNC, which I no longer own. I actually sold my CNC pretty recently. Uh, but before selling it, I did manage to make this template, and I used it with a, just a flush trim bit, and or pattern bit, I should say, and uh, knocked out these driver holes. And there it is. I started with 80 grit or maybe 60 grit on my palm sander, still sort of giving it shape, trying to get some of the wrinkles out of it and some of the hard edges that are left behind from the belt sander. Um, so I'm not really into finish sanding here so much as just giving it that last final touch. I also put some wood filler in a couple spots, uh, which was just sawdust and wood glue. Moved up the grits, I'm probably at like 120 now. There you go, 320. Then of course I just jigsawed out the driver holes, nothing special here. Okay, now it was time to do the finishing. For this finish, um, I could have sprayed a finish on there, but I wanted to apply a hand finish, a hand applied finish. So I went with one, one, and one of boiled linseed oil, mineral spirits, which I cheaped out and used paint thinner, and polyurethane. Uh, mixed up and just hand applied to the speaker. And this is truly my favorite part. I just, <laughs> like all, there's, there's several parts I really enjoy in a speaker build, but this has got to take the, take, take the cake when you have a real wood finish like veneer or solid wood and you apply that finish for the first time it just man everything comes together and you feel like you're so close it, it looks so good and all your hard work is finally paying off as i applied the finish i was really impressed and happy with how it was turning out um, i knew i made the right choice choice right away with the finish type that i decided to go with i then let it dry for upwards of a week each time for each application of finish and then hand sanded with I think 400 and then reapplied the finish. So this process took a long time even though it wasn't a lot of work. Just each layer having to dry and then sand and dry and sand. But every time you do it you get just a little more shine. So you may have noticed that I haven't cut any holes or drilled any holes for the speaker terminals yet in these. And normally I would have before I finished the speaker, but I just didn't really know what I wanted to do and didn't want to deal with it. But I've finally come to that point where I have to do something. And so these are the terminal options I have just laying around. I don't want to order anything just because of time and I have lots. These here, these are a little nicer 
more expensive, which isn't really what I'm looking to do on this speaker. In fact, I think the gold would look better than this silver, but the threading on these is a little bit longer. They're really beefy, so that'll be nice in the wood. If I could order something, maybe I would order something different, uh, but I think they'll look really good. They're solid. Unfortunately, they just cost a lot and don't really make sense on this build, especially when I'm posting videos about saving a $3 inductor and these are like $12 or $15 each. Oh well, let's be foolish. In they go. And then these crossovers are super simple. That was a big part of this design and what I talked about in previous videos. So soldering it together was super simple. It was fast. And um, here I unedited. I was able to solder that up in just a few minutes. Here it goes into the speaker. Um, something I hadn't really thought about is how tight it is. So hot gluing that crossover in there was quite a challenge. I had to really work the glue gun and it, I actually did a decent job. It's all in there really solid and not, not too messy actually. And then I just filled it with some poly stuffing that I took right out of the test enclosures. Might as well reuse. Soldered the drivers on there. Again, those terminals on the tweeter suck. Uh, they like to melt and wiggle around. And I was happy to get a nice fit on both drivers. One thing I noticed while getting them all even and in place and everything was that these are both Dayton drivers same brand and a lot of people buy the same brand because they think they'll match better especially aesthetically people think they'll match the same and it might be hard to see on video but these blacks are actually different the tweeter is blacker this is a little more gray looking next to this tweeter and then i drill pilot holes for each of the mounting holes as well i used a pretty nice um i use this on pretty much all my builds but it's a pretty nice uh, hex head or allen head screw. I have a hard time finding them. I got one place I get them from Solon and they're not very cheap. They're pretty expensive for what you get but they look good. And here's the finished product. I think they look great. I hope you guys do too. There's no room for grills on here. I don't really want any. I think they are going to make excellent looking surrounds. They're going to look proper in my living room. They might not even get used as surrounds. They might get parked upstairs in front of my main living room TV, but we'll see. Anyways, I'm really happy. All right, there it is. That's the speaker, guys. I think it looks great. It's kind of, um, it's a little more work than I planned on with this build. I thought I would just throw something together with one, two, three toy and kind of be done with it but hey overall I'm pretty pleased I'm gonna have a lot of fun with this I finally have some surround speakers in my theater and yeah I think I'll do a second video about final thoughts and measurements and just kind of tie up some so third video sorry tie up some loose ends about the speaker and uh, why I made some of the choices I did how the measurements turned out and that kind of thing so stick around for that thanks bye